We are in a series of messages right now called Faith and Feelings. And this message is important because we understand that we all deal with this very issue. That we all have feelings. In other words, we have emotions and sometimes our emotions are healthy and sometimes our emotions are not. And the reason why it's important for us uh, to make sure they are healthy is because of what we were created to do by God. God wants us to have an influence. He wants us to have a positive influence on the lives of others. And what I've learned about myself is when I am an emotional, in a good place, I tend to impact people in a positive way. But if I'm in a bad place, it's not about other people. It becomes more about me. Uh, we talked last week about uh, the importance of emotions and many different ways it affects us, but basically there are two main issues that relate to our faith in God, that our emotions affect our life and peace. We looked at a scripture that uh, taught that last week. The word life is important because we need to feel good about our life. I mean, how do you feel about your life? It's an emotional question. But it's also about peace because God wants us to bring peace into people's lives. God wants us to be at peace with other people. God wants us to be at peace within ourselves. God calls us to lead people to experience peace. And if we're not at peace with ourselves, it's very difficult for us to lead other people to experience that. It's very difficult for us to be at peace with each other because of it. Because our emotions get in the way and it causes friction between us. What we need to know is God's purpose for our life. God has an intention for our life. We know that Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. That he came to this world to help people who were having a hard time find their way. And he wanted them to find their way and to know it's about having a relationship with God. His intention was to help other people. And in fact, that's the intention that God gives to us. God wants us to reach out to those around us to improve their lives. In fact, that's his intention. It's to improve other people. In other words, it's to help them be better. But we know that Satan doesn't want that to happen. He wants there to be a different intention. And that intention is about ourself. And many times, instead of helping other people, we bring harm into the lives of other people. So the motivation is not to help people be better, it's to help ourselves be better. And if anybody gets in the way of that, we become an emotional wreck. We begin to have problems because our motivation about life has changed. Our purpose about life has changed. We need to know what God has called, called us to do. God wants us to be a light in the world, and we need to take care of anything that's standing in the way of that, even if it's our feelings. I love what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5. He said this, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. I love this. He talks about salt. And salt is a preservative. So then the question is, what is it that we are trying to preserve? And the answer to that question is, we're to preserve God's love. We are to keep God's love alive. We are to... Help other people understand that they are loved by God. And the way in which we do that is to show light. And in light, what we understand is, is that we're showing people, we're enlightening people to see the way that God loves them. No matter who they are, they have value. That God cares about them. And there's a way in which we show that light. It says it in the scripture that we show the light of God through our good deeds. Satan wants to do anything he possibly can to stop us from doing good deeds. That's what he, he wants to stop us from doing that. He doesn't want us to preserve God's love. He doesn't want 
to, he doesn't want us to keep God's love alive by doing these good things for other people to help their life be better. So what does he do? He turns it around. It's not about others, which this scripture is all about. It becomes about ourself. We're thinking in our mind about ourselves and we're not wanting to help bring change so that other, other lives can be better. We need to make sure that we're not listening to what Satan is saying to us. In fact, there's a scripture in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says this, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Satan is putting these false things in our minds. It's about you. It's about what you gain. It's about what you have. It's about what you become. And God wants us to have the right mind to be transformed by listening to him. Do you see somebody who's fulfilling the intentions of God when you look in the mirror? In the scripture we read this, James said, or wrote, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror. And after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. I really love this scripture because it uses, again, an illustration and it talks about a mirror. So who do you see when you look in the mirror? When we look in the mirror, we should see somebody that matters. In fact, it's a good thing every day when you look in the mirror just to say to yourself, you matter. Because we do. God loves us. Our value is not dependent upon anything that happens during the day. Our value is not dependent upon what anybody says to us or does to us. We matter because God cares about us. If you're excited about that, do I hear an amen? Amen? Amen. We need to see that about ourselves. That begins our, our life each day on an emotional, stable course. How do we know who we are? I love this because the scripture also tells us basically what the mirror is. We look intently in the law. We look intently at the word of God to see, am I reflecting who God called me to be as I look at what God says to me? I need to listen to God. I need to put something in my mind that God is teaching me about who I am to be. I need to be a steady, I need to be on a steady diet of putting information in my mind that's godly. And I need to discipline myself to do that very thing. Because Satan wants to put other things in your mind. If you're not putting God's word in your mind, if you're not listening to instruction that God is giving you through other sources, I can tell you what's happening. Satan's putting other things in your mind to get you to transform to the pattern of this world. So is my mind in the right place? Am I thinking about the right things? If not, I need to rewire my mind. I I love, uh, I, I heard this a long time ago about the Bible, that Bible is God's owner's manual for life. Have you ever heard that before? It's cheesy, but good, right? It's God's owner's manual for life. And we know what happens in an owner's manual. If something breaks, a product, you go to the owner's manual, you look in the chapter, in the section, and you find out how to fix it. Well, for us, when something's wrong, we go to the Bible, and it's not chapter and section, it's chapter and verse, my brother and sisters, right? And it teaches us how it is that we're to live. The question is, how do we know we're broken? And answer to that question is, is we're an emotional mess. Our emotions are not healthy. I'm acting out in a way because of my feelings that are not good. It's not about the good of others. It's become something about me. And I am in this terrible, difficult state. I want to talk to you uh, and just remind you about what we learned last week because it's going to lay the groundwork for what I want to teach you in just a few moments. We learned last week that we need to master our emotions. That's number one on your sheet. And there are three main emotions that we have. And I've given you the definitions. All you have to do is put the word in to make it really easy. The first of the primary emotions is love. And love defined is, it's the emotion that moves us towards someone or something. 
So if someone loves me, I am drawn to that person. I mean, it's like a magnet. It draws me to them. Or if I love them, I am drawn to that person because I care about them. I'm concerned about them. My being drawn to somebody or moving toward other people is not dependent upon their behavior. Let me say that again. My moving toward people is not dependent upon their behavior. In other words, I can love somebody even if people don't treat me in a loving way. Which means because I love them, I'm going to move toward them because I want their life to be better, even if their life, again, is in a bad state right now. Even if they've, even if they've targeted me, even if they've hurt me or harmed me in some way. So it moves us toward someone. Love. Okay? No matter the situation, you can still love people. Uh, the second emotion is the emotion of anger. All right? And anger is similar to love because it's, a, it's moving towards someone. But look at the whole definition. The emotion that moves us towards someone or something, but it moves us against the object. Now, where love moves us towards someone because we want to help, what anger does is moves us towards someone because we want to hurt They've done something against us, and we become angry about that. And because of our anger, we lash out, and we become destructive toward that other person. So our feeling of anger leads to not good behaviors, but bad behaviors. The third emotion is the emotion of fear. And the emotion is, it says this, the emotion that moves us away from someone or something. So when this someone does something to me, they hurt me or harm me, and I'm afraid they're going to do it again. So because I feel that way about them, I become really anxious out of fear. I become really stressed out, and instead of moving toward them, I move away from them for self-protection. So it's not about helping the other person. It's not about hurting the other person. It's about protecting myself. It's about helping myself to make it through this. We know in the Bible it talks about all three emotions. I shared this with you last week in Psalm 145, verse 8. It says, the Lord is gracious and compassionate. Listen to this. Slow to anger and rich in love. So we hear that about God, anger and love. And then Peter wrote this. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. What are we frightened over? Again, I shared this. We are fearful of suffering. That's what the verse is about. It's about suffering. So some people, are, they're afraid of suffering. That fear leads them to move away from others. It leads them, uh, because they're afraid of being hurt, to go away from other people. Now, you can't affect people in a positive way if you're moving away from them. It says this about this, that, that we, in our love for other people, if we really love them, there's no fear in that love. In fact, we read this in 1 John 4, verse 8, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. What does that mean? What am I afraid of? What are normal people afraid of? I'm going to go through suffering. You're going to hurt me in some negative way because it's become about me, right? But if I love you and my love for you is not dependent upon your behavior toward me, then I see past your behavior and I care about who you are in your heart and mind. Therefore, love drove out that fear. There is no anxiety. There is no stress over how people are going to treat me because they're treating me the way they treat me is only a sign that there's something that they need in their heart. Do we have a witness out there? So I can move toward them. So I want you to think about these again. Love moves me toward them to help. Anger moves me toward them to hurt. Fear moves me away from them because I'm afraid of being hurt. So we have to know those emotions before we can really get what it looks like to be able to bring change. That leads to how do we do that? If our emotions are off, then how can our emotions be better? How can they be healthy? And that's what I actually want to teach you right now. On your outline sheet, it says this, that we must master our beliefs. That's number two on your sheet. We must master our beliefs. 
So what we believe in our mind. Okay, and I want you to think about beliefs actually using three words. What we think. Think is about belief. This is what I think about you. You've heard that before. This is what I think about you. In other words, this is what I believe about you. Uh, the word belief itself, because we know that, this is how I feel about you. This is what I, this is what I think about you. Believe, excuse me. And then the third word is the word heart. I believe in my, what? Heart. I believe in my heart this about you. Now, the reason why I say that is because the scripture I'm about to read to you uses that third word. In Ephesians 1, verse 18, I pray that the eyes of your, what's the next word? I pray that the eyes of your heart, in other words, what you believe, may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. The riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparable great power for us who, what's the next word? Believe. So now we hear about the heart and now we hear about belief. These two things go together. Let me say that verse 19 again. And his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Get this. When we believe in God, when we believe that God loves us, when we believe that God loves other people, no matter our behavior, we have power. Nothing can overcome us. Nothing can mess up our emotions. In fact, we hear about this power from Isaiah. It says this in Isaiah 4, uh, 40, 31, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their, what's the next word? Strength. So my hope is in God. My attention is in God. For those who open the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Y'all, I am digging this scripture right here. Let me tell you why. I shared again last week with you about the word emotion. And the word emotion comes from a Latin verb, which means to move. Let's make a connection. I just talked to you about love. Anger and fear, all three are movements. Again, the Latin verb for emotion is to move. So in love, I move toward. In anger, I move toward and against. In fear, I move away. All three are movement. Now, the reason why I'm digging this right now is because we find the movement that we're supposed to have that brings us strength. Our hope is in the Lord. We are to move toward the Lord. I'm, I love this because he used three words, Isaiah did, to show us or teach us this very thing. What did he say? We are to fly, we are to run, and we are to walk. And they are all movement in the, in the ahead direction. They aren't backward directions. They're not moving away. Soaring is flying forward. Running is going forward. Walking is going forward. So this is what Isaiah is teaching us. Look, if you want to be strong, move forward toward God. Don't move backwards and start thinking like people in this world think. Our hope is in him. How do I know if I'm moving backwards? Our emotions tell us. Our emotions reveal that to us. It's all about belief. Remember, I talked about thinking and belief in our heart. All these three things go together. It, it, it really is all about uh, what we put in our mind, what we think. When we believe the right thing, our emotions will be healthy. I want to get really practical with you right now when I teach you how this works. It's going to kind of feel like a college class here for a second. But after I'm finished with this, I'm going to pull in how this affects our relationships and how it affects our emotional life with other people. It's the ABCs of our emotions. It's the ABCs, actually, of life and our belief system. On your outline sheet, I want you to look at these A, B, and C. A stands for the activating event. There's some situation that happens. It represents the situation. Someone says or, or does something to us. Or it could be some other event that happens, but this is putting in the context of a person. All right, that's the situation. That's the activating event. The second word is the word belief. 
And the word belief means this. It's what we think about the situation. All right, so this is what happened, and this is what I think about. This is what I believe about what just happened. And then the third is C, the ABCs. The C is the consequence. It's how we respond through our emotions and behaviors. So the consequence, my emotion is like this, all right? And because of my emotions, I act out of my emotions. Remember, we think, we feel, and then we act out. That's the consequence. I'm acting out this way. Now get this. I'm either going to do good, be a light to the world, or I'm going to be bad and a bowl's going to snuff me out. All right, this is, it's all spiritual in this, all right? I'm either going to continue to be a light, how I respond emotionally, or my light is going to go out. Okay, let's, again, put this in a really practical way. I hate snakes. Do I have a witness out there from anybody, okay? I, cannot, I can't stand snakes. Let's just imagine a situation right now, all right? A snake comes in this room, and I run out of the room. Will anyone follow me? All right, yes, we have some people. All right, a snake comes in the room, and I run out of the room. Now, what happens is when we look at the ABCs, many people think this. It's not, it's not ABC. It's A equals C. In other words, the activating event, this situation happens, and the consequence is I take off. A equals C. But there's a B. It's not A equals C. It's A plus B equals C. In other words, the activating event plus what I believe about that situation, the event, leads to the consequence of how I emotionally respond in my behavior. I'll give you an example of it. I just did, all right? In, in the, the illustration I just gave, a snake comes into the room. That's the situation. I believe the snake is going to bite me. That's my belief. I run out because of fear in my life. Emotional response leads to me running an action in my life. Y'all follow me so far? Okay, let's, let's put this in a different context. Let's just say I am tired of being afraid of snakes. So I decide I'm going to go to a snake handling school. And I go to that snake handling school and I figure out and find out, you know, snakes aren't so bad after all. In fact, I'm around them so much I start caring about those snakes. Let's put ourselves back in the situation. A snake comes in the room. Now, because I have put other information in my mind, I believe that snake is a caring snake. I believe that snake is a good snake. I believe that snake is not going to harm me. I have nothing to fear of that snake because I'm used to being around snakes. In fact, I think that snake would be a great pet. So you know what I do? I go toward the snake, pick up the snake, so I can have a relationship with the snake. Activating event leading to a consequence. Here's how it works, right? Same situation as the first one. Same person, but a different belief about it. I'll give you a third example. Let's imagine I have a child, and a few months ago, I go camping with my child or my family, and there's a snake that comes into the campground. It's a poisonous snake, and it bites one of my children, and because of that, my child dies. I have really hard emotions now because of what just happened. I become really angry about the situation that just happened. Okay, so now... Let's get back to the situation. A snake comes in. I hate snakes. I am angry at snakes. I am so angry at snakes, I go find a shovel and I chop off the head of the snake. I'm so angry that it led me to act out to chop off the head of the snake. Same situation. Same person but a different belief about the snake. Are y'all following me? Every situation that we get into, we believe different things about. All right, I told you I was going to tie this into uh, relationships and our emotions, how it works that way. Let's imagine a person walks in the room. A person walks in the room. I 
I have a difficult relationship with that person because that person has done things to me, okay? They hurt me. They've said things about me. It's very hurtful. And because I believe that, I believe this person doesn't care about me and doesn't love me, and I want them to care and love me, okay? So what happens is they come in the room. I believe this about that person, and I don't want them to hurt me again, so what do I do? I go away. I actually will even leave the room to not be around them. The emotion of fear because somebody did something to me, and I'm afraid of being hurt again, so I move away, even leave the room. Are you following me? Fear. Just like the snake, there was love toward the snake. I care about the snake now. There's anger toward the snake. I'm going to chop its head off, that activity. I'm afraid of the snake. I, I run. All right? It's the same thing with people. Here it is. I have this negative feeling because I'm afraid of being hurt by them. It's fear. I become anxious. I become stressed out because of all of this. All right? I become stressed out because of all this. All right, let's imagine another situation. The person comes in the room. They did something to me to hurt me, and I'm not afraid that they're going to do it again. I'm angry that they did it, and I've been waiting to see those people. So they come into the room. I want to hurt them like they hurt me. So I go toward that person. I may say things that hurt them. I may physically do something to them that hurt them, whatever. Out of my anger, I move toward them, and I do something hurtful toward that person that's out of anger. Right? Same situation, same person, but a different belief. Third, a person walks in the room. That person has hurt me. They've lashed out at me. They wanted to harm me. But I look at that person and say, you know what? God created them and values them just like he values me. How would I want to be treated? You know, they can do anything they want to to me. They can cause suffering to me. But all it's doing is to help me to see what's going on in their heart. And I love them. So I move toward them and start a conversation with them. And treat them with care and concern. Same person. Same situation. Different beliefs. Are you following me? How about another one? You're in the room alone. Nobody walks in. You're in the room alone. And somebody's hurt you. They've harmed you. Okay? You go through all that. But in this situation, you've done, you've done something yourself. You made a mistake. You made a bad choice. And you may have hurt somebody else, but it's caused your life to be different. There are bad circumstances because of the decision that you made. You're in the room by yourself. It's a situation. You hurt somebody. Okay, that's the situation. Now I'm in the room, and I'm afraid if I go out into the world and encounter people in the world that I might do the same thing again. So I become afraid of interacting with people or taking a step in the right direction. And my fear causes anxiety in me. It causes stress in me. And it causes me not to move toward the world, but to move further away from the world. Same person, same situation. They made bad choices, but a different belief. Third situation. It's a loving situation. Excuse me, it's the second situation. A loving situation. I did something, I did something to hurt somebody. I know I harmed them. I'm in the room, and I begin process and thinking about how did I harm this person? What did I do? And I feel the conviction of what I did. I know it's wrong. But I look at myself in the mirror, and I say to myself, you matter. I'm not perfect. I do things wrong. So what am I going to do? I need to put something new in my mind to, to see what I did that was wrong so that I can improve to make a positive difference in the world. So I open up the Bible, chapter and verse, wherever it may take me, to read about who I am 
what I did and what I can do to change because I love people in this world. And my conviction is not about how I've been harmed or the consequences that may have happened to me from a bad choice. It's how I've harmed other people and I want to do whatever I can to help them. That's love. There's a third one, though. Okay? This is the anger one. I do something wrong. I'm in my, my room, all right? I do something wrong. I know I did something wrong. And I just get angry with myself. How could I do that? I can't believe how stupid I am. I can't believe I would, you know, and just beat yourself up over and over angry at yourself that you just can't get over it. So what happens because of your anger? This is what you do. You become self-destructive because in anger, you lash out and hurt. So I become self-destructive. I start doing drugs. I drink too much. When I am around other people, I sabotage my relationships because all I do, everything is out of anger because I can't get over what's going on in my life. Same person, same situation, but different belief. Are y'all following me here? God wants you to know that you're loved and to look in the mirror and say you matter and to look and see how you can repair your relationship with God so that you can bring peace with people in this world, leading them to be at peace with God. That's what he's longing for. The other two, snuff out your lamp. The other two, put out your light. But knowing your love cause your light to even be brighter because you learn how to show even more love. You know what you just did? You became salt and you preserved the love of God. You kept it alive. If you're going through negative emotions, Satan's trying to kill God's love and he's being successful through you. What God wants you to do is to look at yourself in the mirror and say you matter and believe it enough where you, where, where you will start putting information into your mind, into your brain to change what you think and believe and what's in your heart in order for you to be able to move forward. Y'all, let me say it this way. So you can fly. So you can run. So you can walk. Unfortunately, we got a bunch of dead eagles around. Do I have a witness about that? They've been shot. What God's wanting to do right now is to nurse you back to health. Uh, once again, I have preached to myself two times today, which has been a joy. All right? Isn't this what we need? It all has to do with your attitude. I, I know there's a lot of other scripture on here. I'm not going to read it because I don't have time. I'll just tell you really quick. It's two illustrations from the Bible, one about Jeremiah and one about the 10 or the 12 spies and how they had different beliefs. Okay, that's what the scripture's about. I'm not going to explain it. What it does lead to is to helping us understand that all of us have different attitudes. You're going to have an attitude about yourself and you're going to have an attitude about other people. These last two things we're going to fill in and we'll be done. All right? Look at the attitudes. The first attitude is we... Versus we, all right? What is the we? What is in that we? We can or we can't. My attitude is, let's put the second part, I can't. I am so overcome by everything that's happened. The situation is too much for me to handle. I can't. I can't do anything about it. Satan just won. Or I can I can do something about this. I'm going to choose to move. I'm going to choose to go in the right direction and to begin putting things in my mind. Here's the other. It's not just about ourselves, right? It's about other people. It's the you can or you can't. You can or you can't. 
Why is it that you can't? I am so upset with you. I'm so mad at you. I'm so discouraged about you. Whatever it is, you'll never change. You'll never, you can't change. And because of that attitude, you'll never do anything to help them be different. Let me ask the question again. Would you want somebody to feel that way about you? That you can't improve? But that's our attitude. Or we can have the you can. Yeah, you've come in here. Yeah, you cause suffering. Yeah, you've caused problems. But you know what? You can change. You can be better. And I want to help you be better. Light to the world. That was a flame. It was a bad illustration. Okay. I don't even know what makes that noise. I don't know. All right. I think that was better. That was better. You've just become a light to the world. I know I keep talking about the W that we have for our, our logo. I don't want to, you know, keep doing that. But when you see the W, our new logo, I don't want you to see a W. I want you to see a lamp because that's what it looks like. The middle part, oh, it's like my fingers work perfectly because that one's longer, all right? Um, the middle part of the W is longer than the other two. When you look at it, it actually looks like a lamp. And this is the reason why we want to use that is because you are a light to the world. The scripture I just read a minute ago actually says that. You are a light to the world. Every time I get in my car and I see that magnet, that W on the back of it, it reminds me, you are a light to the world. How do I share the light to the world? You are to do good deeds today. In other words, you better be a good driver, number one, all right? Get this, but wherever I go in that car, I am to be a light to the world. Isn't that good? Don't you wish you had one of those magnets? Yeah, we ran out. We're getting some new ones. They're coming, all right? So make sure you get one when they come. Are you a light to the world? I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes right now. I I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to all of us today, each of us, because that's what he does. And he's our counselor. Week number one, we learned that, that God's given us a counselor. And what the counselor does is to help us see our challenges, where we are off, where we're messed up, all right? He convicts us about that. But he also leads us and moves us and motivates us to go in the right direction in order for us to be at peace with God over this so that we can help to bring peace between others and him. So what is God saying to you today? You might have an anger problem. You might be fearful and staying away from people. You might be the loving person. It'd be awesome. You know what your challenges are on your cheat today there are a couple of personal evaluation questions and it asks which one of these emotions do you normally use or come out of you love fear anger and then it asks you to give an example of it and then it asks the question what do you believe that's causing you to feel that way and to do that well that honestly is a good question to think about right now what do you believe that's caused you to be who you are right now? What's caused you, what's, what's caused your light to snuff out? Well, God wants you to overcome that. And you can, and it begins with being honest with God and saying, God, I know that I matter, and I know that I messed up, and God, I want to know how to be better so that I can be an influence for you. What a great prayer that you can pray today. As I pray, I would encourage you to pray that or anything else God would lead you to do. Father, I thank you so much for your instruction and the power of your word. God, I thank you that this is just backed up so much by what you give us through the scripture. And I I, I pray, God, that we would not only hear from you and feel the conviction in our hearts, but, God, that we would look at ourselves in the mirror and say we matter. That we would not allow people's behavior to determine whether we matter. But God, that we would know that you created us and because of that we matter. And God, we want to keep your love alive. So help us, God, do whatever we need to do to get our emotions right. Lead us to be a light to the world. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.